Thank you all very much for coming to uh, Gorilla Theater 2000 inaugural Dramatist Festival. We uh, go around co coffee houses throughout the city and reward the winners from our contest. Uh, Gorilla Theater is a not for profit theater organization. We've been around for over 11 years. For the last five years, we sponsor a playwriting contest. Uh, where the winners receive uh, the plays produced or read at coffee houses, and uh, there is a cash prize for the top winner. Uh, if you'd like more information on that, see me after the reading, and I can uh, give you information where to uh, send your uh, information to uh, playwright. Uh, Tonight's play is the uh, third place winner, Potatoes. It's written by Ron Keeler. He is out of Burbank, California. Uh, the second place winner is Trembles by Vicki Gordon Borderay. She is a Kansas City playwright. And the first place winner was Death as Usual by Brendan O'Neill. And that was a uh, Lawrence playwright. And uh, I say uh, tonight's play uh, was directed by Hal. Fisher and Hal, if you would like to introduce so the Potatoes, the play in one act by Ron Fire. Jen is Lori McMahon, Chip, Stan Tate, and Treasure, Michael Hogue. The time is the present. The setting is a cramped city apartment. The apartment's sparsely furnished, a ratty couch, a shameless lamp, a couple of lawn chairs, and a crude black and white television set. The television set is always on. Lights up reveal treasure sprawled out on the couch watching television. He's wearing nothing but boxers and looks as if he hasn't showered in days. In his hands, he holds his lifeline, the remote control. Chip paces back and forth. He's on the phone with his girlfriend, Jen, Jen complaining about treasure. Although a mere few feet away, treasure remains oblivious. Three weeks! Three goddamn weeks. Jen, three weeks. I'm not lying. He hasn't moved a muscle in three weeks. How do I know beans? What am I, his fucking mom? I can't watch him all day. I work. Hey, if it makes you feel better, eat a can of cherry pie filling. Because it's gone, that's how, and I didn't eat it. No, he didn't bake a pie. Yeah, straight. Probably with his fucking fingers. Jen, he's not starving. There's a sink full of dirty dishes, so somebody... No, no, I won't quit bitching. I will not! I refuse. I have every right to bitch. All he does is watch TV. I don't know. Anything. Whatever's on. The other day, Jen, the other day I come home and he's watching bowling. Yeah, it's bowling. Hey, I feel lazy bowling, you know. Actually picking up an eight or nine pound ball and rolling at the fucking pins, much less watching it. No, it's not. Bowling's not a sport. I don't give a fuck what your Uncle Rick says. Your Uncle Rick's an idiot. He lives in his truck. Motel. Motel my ass. Bowling's a hobby, if that. Now, stamp collectors, they get more of a workout. I will not lower my voice. No. Maybe I want to watch TV. Maybe. Well, there's PBS. I like PBS. Yes, Jen, the Sesame Street Station, Rover, Big Bird, Bert and Ernie, the whole gang. I hear you. Yeah, yeah, you gotta run. No? Nope. Fine. Yes, I'll talk to him. I promise. Yes, I promise. Not now, no. Fine, now. Yes, now. I love you too. <laughs> Treasure, we need to talk. Don't shush me, you son of a bitch. <laughs> How does he do it? He's just a kid. A kid, man. A little ass kid. How does he continually outbox these burglars? <laughs> and with such hilarity. Home alone? 
You're watching Home Alone? Home Alone! See? Why? It's on. Uh, turn it off. And just lay it here. That may be fine for you, my friend. But a mind like mine craves constant stimulation. Stimulation? Stimulation is one thing, treasure. You're being lobotomized. 101 channels of nothing but numb. Here, take the load off. It's almost over. And guess what's on next? What? Guess! I have no idea. You're in for a real treat. Hope you don't plan on going anywhere soon. Why? Trust me, man. Just grab yourself a lucky lager out of the fridge and help yourself to a bag of my funnels. Funions? Funions? You don't think Karen's fat or in a bag of funions? Or the little bags? Cop a seat, man. This is going to be crazy. What are we watching? A Smokey and the Bandit Marathon, followed by Kitty Rogers' Six Pack. My God! Four trailer park things. Only happens once a year. Like the flu season. How can you watch this shit? I can't believe this. I'm living with everything that's wrong with America. Man, this isn't shit. It's on TV. It's on TV. It must be good. Good? Would you listen to yourself? Good? TV's garbage treasure. A bunch of empty calories. Like soda. Only for your head. Why don't you rent a movie or read a book? Something with some artistic merit. Don't talk to me about art. Why the hell not? I have it. That's why. Arts for straight suckers. How can you say that? Three little letters long. A piece of shit, nothing but a word. It's still so damn obnoxious, full of itself. Look at me. I'm hot. Makes me sick. Gives me a retention headache just thinking about it. Besides, what's that mean? Art. It's so subjective. I've seen a toilet bowl called art. For real, man, a toilet bowl. And not one of the nice ones either. You know, with fuzzy wool seat covers to warm your ass. Not even. Just a plain old white porcelain urinal. It wasn't a toilet bowl. It was a urinal. You're talking about Duchamp, Marcel Duchamp. Now, is that art? It's fine art. It has something to say. Something to say. Man, I've had some food talk back to me. A couple of chili dogs just last night. But never the toilet bowl. I mean, come on, man. If a toilet bowl's art, then, logically speaking, what you put into it is art too, right? <laughs> you're disgusting. But at least that's creative. At least there you're creating something. All right, treasure. That's enough. You know how I feel about art. What? You're an actor, not an artist. Don't push me through this. And apparently not a very good one. Because you haven't landed a part, even a little bit one, since you were 10 years old. And that was on how. Which, okay, even I'll admit, was the funniest and most innovative show on television. At the time, let me tell you something, Treasure. Not only is acting an art form, it's more than that. It's real. The real deal, man. It's, it's honest. And honesty. Honesty and art. I mean, I mean, it spills out of your head, not your ass. Which brings me back to television. You watch it, man. Yeah, PBS. PBS. What's so great about PBS? It's educational. This is educational. All alone? <laughs> Whatever. Either way, it's a million fucking light years away from education. Think so. No so. Then don't come crying to me, man, when robbers break into the pad and your papa's ass doesn't know how to fend them off with an iron of a ball of string and some marbles. Treasure, why the hell would anyone break into this dump? For our lawn chairs, our lamp without a shade? Asshole, we have nothing to steal. If anything, they get in here and feel sorry for us. Probably leave something behind. What about the TV? This thing, this piece of shit, it's black and white. Remember when everyone was talking about the color sequence and Schindler's List? And you were like, uh, what the girl in red dress? Plus, it's American. I mean, who besides us owns an American TV? We're not jiggles. Tell me, crack baby, what makes this relic? This slice of suburban antiquity is so fucking appealing, huh? Which of its many space age features, the broken knobs, the volume control that has to be adjusted with tires, or, or, or maybe it's this this makeshift aluminum foil rabbit ears for an antenna. Is, is that it? It has a remote. <laughs> That's right. How could I forget? The remote control. What would civilization be without this? I should have A tiny testament to man's electronic wizardry. The single greatest invention since, since, why since the television itself. I think I see your problem there. My problem? 
You suffer from a chronic case of too much with this world either. You're all about materialistic bullshit, man. The here and the now. Me. Honestly, Trevor, yeah. I can clear us about that. Then why are you bad mouthing our minimalist decor? <laughs> we have no decor. <laughs> Fine. Fuck it, you're right. I'm a materialist. I mean, yeah, I'd like to have a couple of nice things, a kitchen table, some chairs, a lamp with a shade, you know, so that when I read, it's not like staring directly into the fucking sun. Maybe a comfortable couch. Don't miss the couch, man. She's a good cat. You see, I wouldn't know. I never even sit on her. You don't deserve to. You don't appreciate it. Me and this catch man, we're tight. The tightest. Like this, man. We love each other. And I definitely love this. Without this catch man, I feel naked. Me? I feel naked without clothes. Yeah, you're funny like that. Now, I see. I'm the funny one. I'm the funny one because I had a job. Because I pay the bills, keep the place clean. I'm the funny one because I give a fuck about where and how I live. Yep. You know, I'm just really feeling frustrated. You ought to take that up with Jan. You're not sexual. Then, dude, what's your debacle? My, de my debacle? You! You're my debacle, you dumb bastard. Me! You! Who else? I haven't done anything. That's just it. You haven't done anything. Hold up, man. You're accusing me of not doing it. Not a thing. Not a damn thing. Well then, shit. What can I say? You. I'm, I'm serious, dude. I think it's time you started doing something around here. But man, I'm good at it. What? Not a damn thing. And I defy you to find someone better. You don't do the dishes or take out the trash. Or, you know, vacuum. We have a vacuum. Hey, your friend, late as hell, if at all. And it's not like you're in trucks even. If you smoke a lot of pot or something, I know I might understand. Man, that's just it. I think of all the marijuana I never smoked, and I get so. So this. Treasure. <laughs> treasure, dude. You're lazy. You're the laziest son of a bitch I know, bar none. I'm not lazy, man. I just don't give a fuck. Same thing. Man, no, it's not. There's a world of difference. But hey, you know what? Forget it. You're not even worth my mouth. I just hope it makes you feel like a real hard ass. Poking fun at me and shit. Like I ain't got any feelings. I got feelings. I know you. You want your big one? I don't. Yeah, you do. All the time, man. That's bullshit. You know what I think? What? I think you're insecure. I think it makes you feel better ragging on a jackass like me. Someone so incredibly unique. You're not me. So stupid. I think you're afraid to accept yourself, man. Who you really are. That's why you're always putting on these facades. Always running. Pretending like you're Mr. Wonderful. Mr. Who? Wonderful. And I got news for you. There's only one Mr. Wonderful. And that's that old wrestler in the WWF. Mr. Wonderful, oh, what's his name? Paul Arnold. Mr. Wonderful. Paul Arnold. Great tactician. Master of the pile driver of the figure four leg lock. What are you saying? I'm saying you ain't in there. No one is. This is stupid. I'm out of here. Where are you going? Out. Where? Anywhere but here. Cool. Whatever. No one's stopping you. But don't think I'm taking these smoking and the bandits for you. <laughs> the door slams. Blackout. Scene two lights up to reveal treasure on the couch wrapped in a blanket from the waist down. Chip enters from off stage. Can you see my spaghetti strainer? Let me rephrase that. What did you do with my spaghetti strainer? Check this out, man. This Asian chick, she kicks ass, man. She rocks on the violin. I guess she's been playing it since she was like nine months old or some crazy shit. How old is she now? 17 or 18. Not bad looking. For a bandy. Amazing. You think she's one of them prodigies? Doubt it, buddy. Mozart was a prodigy. He was composing symphonies at the age of six. This girl, she's just gifted. With a talent like that, you figure she's born with it, right? I don't know. I mean, she'd have to be. How else can you explain it? Can't. Me neither. See, man, it's got me thinking. You hear all these cool stories, man. That guy you just said. Mozart. Yeah, yeah, but this chick. Eddie Van Halen teaching himself to play the guitar. So what? We'll say, 
I mean, what if I am some sort of clodgy person, virtuoso, and I don't even know it? Jesus. Seriously, man. What if I missed my calling? It's possible. But not probably. I've never even picked up a guitar or a violin or even a piano. You have to be pretty strong to pick up a piano. Not even just fucking around, man. How about the drums? Maybe I'm the next Ringo star. Think about that shit for a second. Me, the second coming of Ringo. Man, it sounds fucked up, but man, that's how random life really is. You're a savant. <laughs> then again, man, what if I had a hidden knack for some lame ass instrument like the xylophone? What if I was secretly the greatest fucking xylophone player in the world? How bad would that sound? <laughs> Guy couldn't help but feel a little shit. Treasure, don't worry, I'm pretty sure you can secretly play anything. Not the drums, not the guitar, not the fucking triangles, so just let it go. Man, just thinking about this shit is exhausting. All that wasted potential. You are wasted potential. 165 pounds of wasted potential. And I swear to God, Treasure, that's all you're ever going to amount to until you actually get off, off your lazy ass and do something. You mean try. Why? Why put myself out there? Why face the first in what will surely be a long series of life's inevitable disappointments? Because that's the way it is. That's how it works. Hey, don't you want to make something of yourself? Don't you have any ambition? You know what my man Bruce is? What? Freedom from ambition is one of the keys to true happiness. But fine, but I even bet your mood changes boxes every couple of days. Well, I guess I just take my existentialism a little more seriously. <laughs> Where's my strainer? I have no idea. Then get one. I can't make my spaghetti without it. Make something else. I want spaghetti. Then the improvise, man. Use a little human ingenuity. Ingenuity? And that's funny coming from you. Hey man, who came up with the idea of using socks for other myths? <laughs> get, get up, Treasure! Get up, you fucker! And find my goddamn strainer! Chip tears off Treasure's blanket, and to his horror discovers that he's now part of the couch. He frantically searches the cushions for Treasure's missing legs, but they're nowhere to be found. Chip jumps back hysterical. What the? What? What the? You're connected! Treasure! You're connected to the couch! You're connected to the fucking couch! No less. Dude, your legs are gone! Go on, Treasure! So it seems. Where'd they go? Can you feel them? Can you feel your legs? I don't know. What do your legs feel like? This is fucked up! Dude, your legs are gone! This isn't real! This is this is Kafka! It's no big deal. No big deal! Treasure! Yesterday! Yesterday I had a roommate. I had a roommate and a couch. A roommate and a couch. <laughs> Notice, two separate and distinct entities. Worlds apart in the terms of atoms and molecules and shit. And now, today, I, I don't have a roommate and a couch. I have a roommate couch. The two of you joined at the hip like a circus freak, like Siamese twins. You're telling me it's no big deal? I'm calling 911. Why? You need a doctor. I'm fine. Dude, you're a couch! <laughs> I'm calling an ambulance. Don't bother. We need to get you some help. Maybe it's not too late. For what? To save your legs! I'm sweating, man. It's just a phase. I'll grow out of it. This isn't a goddamn pair of geranimals. Live it a few days. It'll pass. It'll pass? What, you listen to yourself? It sounds like you have a cold. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god, what if it's a cold? Some, some terrible new strain. Mutation. South American, probably. What if it's contagious? Oh god, man, it's not contagious. I swear to god, Treasure, if I even wake up and throw pillows for hands, it's not contagious. <laughs> you don't know that. I mean, not for sure, but we gotta get you checked out. Settle down. Settle down? Settle down? How can you say that? Man, these things happen. <laughs> these things? These things. They happen. Things happen. <laughs> For the best? Or it's not. <laughs> Things happen. Maybe I'm dreaming this. That's it. This is all a dream. Want me to pinch it? Only a dream. A terrible dream. Yeah, sure. I'm dreaming. That's the only logical explanation. A couple minutes, you wake up, everything's gonna be fine. Why couldn't I have just dreamed of a child? Talk about it, but wake up, Chip. Wake up! It's all just a bad dream! 
You're not waking up, Chip. You're not dreaming. Dude, don't do this stuff to yourself, Chip. You're not dreaming. Wow, well, he's feeling busy. He's feeling lightheaded. That's one of the first symptoms. Oh God, Phantom <laughs> Jello. Just fucking with you. This is too much. Take a load off. Plenty of room here. We did this. You brought this cursed thing into our home. It's a nice couch. Why? <laughs> why? Of all the couches and all the yard sales in the world, why did you have to get this one? I mean, the color's great, but did you have to get an evil? Like this great? What, with the purchase of Ouija board? Oh God. This isn't happening. This is this is not fucking happening. Please, somebody, somebody cue the Twilight Zone thing. I mean, I think I'm gonna be sick. Blackout. Scene three. Lights up to reveal treasure now up to his armpits and couch. Chip and Jen look on. Why is he part of the couch? I never noticed it before. But you guys make a really cute couple. <laughs> it's nice to see two young people so in love. It really warms my heart. Which is right about here. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Chip, why is he part of the couch? I've always said that love is a parachute. I have no idea, Chip. Shop around, find some you like. Hey, try them on. Treasure. Work around the store. And they park. See how they fit. And the couch. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. You fit? You back them up. You take them home. You know, that's what I'm talking about, Jen. But even then, even after Why you get them home, treasure? there's no lifelong commitment. You're really no binding contract. Shoes. Is it part of the they couch? Were out, man. <laughs> No matter how nice they are, even wing I don't care what they say. Something, man, you're going to have to get yourself in the air. That's just the way it is. Now it's it's his whole torso. Jim, that's like some, some cheesy B movie. The couch is eating him alive. You two love birds. Man, you've been at it for, what is it now? Four years? What did the doctor say? Four years. I don't know. That's a beautiful thing. You won't let me call one. What do you mean, you won't let you? Won't well, let me. Call him anyway. Chip, he's a couch. Any rights he had, he lost the minute he went down the courts. But Jeff, I'm afraid of what the doctors might do to him. I mean, you saw ET. Treasure, don't you worry. We're going to get you some help. Thanks, but Jen, everything's good. Who got his parents? Leave them out of this, man. They're pushing 60. And what would be a pending collapse of Social Security and Medicare? Couple with a higher cost of living, <laughs> higher than ever before, man. They got enough shit to worry about. Besides, my mom, she doesn't deal well with birds, especially medical ones. Not since the Stretch Armstrong used to. What? You guys remember Stretch Armstrong, don't you? Kinda. Of. Yeah, he was a superhero. Granted, a minor one. Black the obvious in your face flare of saying Captain America or Spider Man. Man, he, he was the coolest ass doll, hands down. You could bend and twist his arms and legs like pipe in your Pull and squeeze and squish him like some silly putty. And man, they'd always snap right back to their original positions. Man, you could really fuck that doll up. And he could take it too. Boy, I mean, try backing over Barbie or G.I. Joe with your old bird station back. No fucking way. Ain't happy. Yeah, I remember. I remember now. I had one of those. You did? It was a great toy. Not like these bullshit toys they mass produce now. Turtles with nunchucks and shit. So what happened? Oh yeah. Anyway, man, I was a curious little guy. Cute as hell too. And I got to wondering about the gooey shit inside of Stretch. The gooey shit? The shit that made Stretch Stretch. I wanted to know what it was. Uh, I'm not sure I like this. So what'd you do? I poked a hole in it with a screwdriver. And then what? Did you help or something? No. I sucked it dry. Oh, I did. That's <laughs> disgusting. Oh, did it taste that bad? <laughs> but my mom, she freaks out. She goes fucking ballistic. Starts crying and carrying on about what a terrible mother she is and how her only baby's as good as dead. Me, I'm laughing. I find this little thing funny. And it is. I mean, picture. I just ate this dog. I'm still, I still got goo shit dripping down from my chin. <laughs> Pretty goddamn amusing. Poor oh, mom. What happened? Well, she throws me in the back of the station wagon and rushes me to the emergency room. 
We get there, and now she really gets there. Starts begging nurses, doctors, orderlies, anyone in white really to take a look at me. Pretty soon I've got a baby with two sliced thumbs checking me out. Really? Yeah. And I didn't even have to get my stomach pumped. Turns out stretches in you to nothing but corn syrup. Corn syrup? No shit. I shit you out. You think that makes me some sort of late homosexual? Second stretch like that. You certainly have some issues. Issues? We all have had issues. I mean, he's a walking fucking newsstand. Man, sometimes I swear I'd give anything to be gay. I know what guys want. Yeah, me too. Kentucky Center called that to the cattle set. Beef jerky and thinking of the police well, said ain't about talking. If only blink, you can airbrush me a girlfriend into existence. You know, Trudger, I think you may have just hit upon the root of your problem. No. I bet your affliction is psychological. I mean, the brain's a peculiar organ. Nate, you're so afraid of rejection, be it in the form of a job or a relationship or whatever. Hey, you've created this protective shell around yourself. Well, in your case, it's polyester. Don't you see, Trevor? No one can get at you if you're a couch. Yeah, but they can get on him. Sit on his face. The key is to let it all go, to take more risks. Take more risks? Great theory, Chad. I mean, really. But you know there's a lot of scared people out there. You know, we're talking black chops, so terrified of failure. They can't even leave their own homes. And yet, you don't see any of them. And correct me here if I'm wrong, I'm working in the couches. Our box starting with your love life. I got a great girl I can say you love her. You love her. She's super thin and funny and a great cook. She's part Italian. The other part would be part mostly. Otherwise, I don't think it's going to work out. Sweet. Yeah. She's so smart, sweet, and way cool. She's just like one of the guys. Probably most like one of the guys. Jeff, stay out of this, please. Jen, thanks. But to be perfectly honest, I'm not interested in a relationship. Not right now. I've sort of grown attached to my, you know, a space. I get lonely sometimes, but. Treasure. Everybody gets lonely. Ah, oh, Jen, that's a bunch of shit, and you know it. Not everybody gets lonely, it's just for men. A myth perpetuated by lonely people about lonely people make other lonely people feel less lonely, and that's it. Some people never get lonely. Of course, that's not to say people in relationships don't get lonely, but they do. Uh, <laughs> hey man, I've got an idea. Why don't you see if you can fit your other tutor out there? To work the remote with his mouth. <laughs> Summer, drunken chip wearing nothing but a t shirt and boxers, sips beside him on the floor, swigging cheap whiskey. I'm just wondering you think you got a couple of hours tops. Does it bother you? Should it? Yeah, I mean, you ought to be scared, don't you think? Of what? Of, uh, I don't know, meeting your maker. <laughs> My maker? You mean my design? Possibly my bolster. <laughs> Can't you do? I mean, I mean, how can you do that? How can you crack jokes? Are you the least bit concerned about what the hell's gonna happen to you? I already know what's gonna happen to me. What? The same thing that's been happening to me all my life. Well, that would be. You're looking at me. And what? Nada. Nada? Nada. Nada? What do you mean, nada? I mean, who do you think you are, Hemingway? It's a bullshit answer. Why, man? Because it's not what you want to hear? No, because it is. I mean, you're scared as fuck if you know it. You have no idea what's waiting for you out there, or in there, or wherever. Oh, but you do. No, but I know there's something. You do? Yes. How do you know? So I don't know. 
Because you know. Because I know. Yeah. Tell me again about bullshit and ass. What did I know? All right. All right, church. Fuck it. I'll tell you. But you gotta bear with me. Because it's, it's just a theory. Uh, I haven't kind of thought of the whole thing through yet. Yeah. Well, then there's your present predicament. That doesn't help make matters easier anyway. I mean, I mean, shit, who would have thought that as human beings, we walk such delicate crap? It's like a cup between not only life and death, but home furnishings. <laughs> Get on with it. Well, you know, when you're, when you're up high, super high on top of a building, or a parking garage, or something, and all you can think about is jumping. And you don't. Really. Even though you kind of sort of wanted to. Yeah. See, see, treasure. That's what I'm talking about. That's all I know. That's all I know. That's all I know. I mean, that impulse, that yearning to jump. It's your soul talking to you. And what's it say? Help. Your soul wants out. See, the body's got a temple. Not like they told us. It's a prison. A prison. Yeah. And, and now I know what you're thinking. How come some people are blessed with better prisons than others? In fact, I'm well aware of it. <laughs> One that becomes painfully evident in the And I don't have, and I don't exactly have an answer for it, except to say that these prisons, they range from minimum to maximum security. Supermodels, I mean, they're on house arrest. Who cares? It doesn't matter. What matters is the soul wants out. But, but, but it can't get out, not unless the body lets it out. And the only way that that's happening Oh, the body's dead body. And the body doesn't want to die. Of course. Of course. It knows that's, that's it. You get one crack at the big time. One go around. It's now or never. And that's why, yeah, you'll contemplate suicide. You know, throwing yourself off that building, or slashing your wrist with your drink disposal. But you can't bring yourself to do it. No matter what. No matter how much you want to give into the soul. You love the body that is nice. Kind of like a shell oh, governing the turtle. Uh huh. Well, that's a pretty all right theory, man. You ought to give up acting and start your own religion. Religion's not something you take lightly. Or seriously. It doesn't hurt. Religion? This? Yeah. No. But it doesn't feel good either. It doesn't feel good. And don't say nada. So I swear to God, if you say not, I'm smothering your ass with plastic slip covers. The first chance I get. <laughs> and it doesn't hurt. And it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel at all. I guess if I had to say it feels like something. I have to say it feels like this. This? This. You know, something other than that. I had that for a while. Now I have this. There's nothing I can do about this. So I don't. But a few hours we be gone. Someday, man, so will you. Sooner than you think, probably. What's the point? My point? The point, not your point. You're like an unsharpened pencil. You have no point. Well, fuck you. What's your point? That we can't escape death? Big fucking revelation there. No, that we can't escape life. You really don't want to suck the life out of the room, don't you? Well, what do you want? I'm up to my neck and couch. I think I'm entitled. <laughs> I'm sorry, Treasure. It's, 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 this is a lot of shit for me to digest right now. You know me. I get upset when a light bulb burns out of that. Last time you didn't eat or sleep for three days. <laughs> I'm easily overwhelmed. She'll be back. Who? Jen? I don't care about Jen. Seriously, I can give two shits. Really? No. But I don't love her. I don't necessarily not love her. I don't love her. Does that make any sense? You're asking your buddy the cat. That makes sense. <laughs> Excellent buddy. She's a good girl. The best. Just like you said, sometimes you're better off by yourself. I mean, look at you, Treasure. You never had a girlfriend. So I appreciate you wanting better. And you're one of the most content guys I know. Almost happy even. You know why? Why? Because you figured out a long time ago the secret to this life really is to I did. No, that doesn't mean that you can't be with someone. No, not at all. It just means that you can't need to be with someone. 
To be with someone, to really be with someone. First, you've got to be with yourself. Then by yourself. Inside yourself. Or inside a yeah. cat. Which I always admire that. Thanks, man. But that's not nothing, got nothing to do with why I don't have a girlfriend. No. No way, man. Jen's right about it. I know I seem like I'm brimming with self confidence with, with, with what the Mexicans call the cheese bump. But in reality, man, I'm still the same scared little shit with sucked off stretch arms, bro. Out! Sucked out stretch arms, bro. <laughs> Women scare me to fucking death, man. You know, I've never even asked a girl that. Never. Not once. Not unless I was 100% sure she'd say yes. That's what I love about the sixth grade. <laughs> the sixth grade? Man, I was a regular goddamn Burt Reynolds in the sixth grade. Yeah. Hell yes! Because I knew how to work the system. <laughs> say you like it, girl. And I'm not ashamed to say I'd like it more than my fair share. But what you did was have one of your little buddies, a little Danny or Joey or Brian, have a passive note in her class. No, I know. And on that note, man, we're three boxes marked with yes, no, and maybe. Maybe usually meant yes. Just that little girl was kind of shot. That she was going to take the little further. The beauty. No, man, the genius of the system is that you got to pretend like you had no idea any of this shit was going down. Even though you orchestrated the whole thing. The embarrassment factor was nil. I'm telling you, man. What? Sixth graders are the smartest motherfuckers in the whole world when it comes to love. We ought to live out our lives backwards. Kids have all the wisdom. We just have the wisdom teeth. Mine are gone. They eat paste. We eat pate. Look, I'm just saying that as adults, man, we think about things way too much. We tend to overanalyze the most trivial shit and lose sight of what's really important. It sucks. It's like we're forever a pack of high school sophomores struggling to write French or Spanish. We keep putting our accents in all the wrong places. <laughs> well, you, well, you know what, though? That's just too bad. Too fucking bad. Because we all gotta grow up, Treasure. No one wants to, but that's what we do. We start out little, and we grow up. I mean, who would want to play dodgeball for the rest of their life? It's just not realistic. I mean, what kind of society would we have? Really rude. A person has to make a living, and to pay bills, and I'll tell you something else. Not to be a dick or nothing, but this shit wouldn't have happened to you if you had a job, if you had picked up some sort of sensible career. Career. The ugliest word in the English language. As it stands, your life lacks purpose. That's the nicest thing anybody's ever said to me. I'm serious! You will fall. <laughs> Chip finishes the bottle of whiskey, jumps up, smashes it against the wall. He's lying. This is a fucking joke, Treasure! It's not! <laughs> What? Why are you laughing? Stop laughing! Oh, but you're wrong. It is, man. That's exactly what it is. It's a joke. Great big fucking joke. And it's a bad one, man. The worst joke of all time. A million times worse than any you ever heard from your dad or your grandpa or anybody. This joke, man. This joke. It's punchline. It's so fucking obvious. So painfully fucking obvious, man. But you don't get it. You want to complicate shit. And you can't be. Not this time. You just can't. It all boils down to a choice. Laugh or don't laugh. The choice is yours. And this ain't television. Nobody's writing you any new jokes, man. I'm through with you. I can't hear you, Treasure. I can't hear you anymore. Chip passes out. Treasure continues to struggle with her look. Blackout. Scene five. Lights up to reveal Chip waking from his drunken slumber. He looks at the couch. No trace of treasure. He gets up, puts the couch on its side, and slides down the front door. He exits the stage. Off stage, we hear clattering and sounds of goods banging. And cars and trucks pass. Presumably, Chip has dumped the couch to the curb and doesn't attract him. He returns and removes his shirt and takes a seat on the floor, precisely where the couch used to be. He picks up the remote and begins flipping through the channel. He pauses. Hey, come alone! Black guy.
thank you all for coming and taking part of the birth of this new play. And if you'd like to see the other two plays that are being read tomorrow night, we'll be reading Trembles at Toto's up in Midcap, Johnson Drive. And Saturday, we'll be reading Death as Usual at Mondays on the 51st. Oh, uh, have spaces to read that. Uh, also, Little Theater will be producing Potatoes and Death as Usual as a full scale production. Uh, August 2001 at the Just Off Broadway Theater. Oh, wow. Uh, so, uh, thank you very much for taking part in this. And again, Grill is enough for profit organization. And your donations would be much appreciated for continuing to bring the new theater. Thank you. It's a donation bucket. Is it? Okay, I lost one of the tanks. Go ahead. <laughs> Well, they probably need paint for things too sometimes. Mm -hmm. they, they, they probably need paint for things too sometimes. Well, I would say <laughs> paint for the music theater. If you're a theater group, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Always good. I don't know. I don't know. Thank you.